Hello and welcome back to another episode of Your Drone Questions Answered. I'm John Dicko with the Drone Launch Academy, here to find the answers to your drone questions. These are questions that you yourself submit to us. And today's question is a really good one. I'm pretty excited about it. Is where do things stand with drone deliveries? How does it work? What are the limitations? Today I have with me Cheyenne Samadi. He is the SUAS flight operator with Wing, but he's also owner of his own company, Virginia Drone Shots. Cheyenne, thanks for joining me today. Thanks, John. Great to be with you. So this is cool. I mean, I think about drone deliveries. This was kind of almost my first introduction to drones when things are really getting popular, fired up 10, 15 years ago. Is your Amazon order going to be delivered via drone soon? When is that going to happen? A lot's happened and a lot hasn't happened, I think, since that time. And so it, it, this is a great to have a discussion with somebody who's actually been a part of drone deliveries and can kind of give us uh, an idea of where things stand today with drone deliveries. And so Cheyenne, I'd love to just hear a little bit about your background, your experience, especially when it comes to drone deliveries, but also just when it comes to your career in drones. Sure, sure. So I started getting involved with drones about four years ago. I was working as a project manager and I started doing some videography and photography work for that company. And later on, I actually started getting introduced to all the different ways you can make money with drones through Drone Launch Academy watching all of David's videos, sometimes two or three times if it was a really good interview, and just soaking in all the different experience from all the entrepreneurs across the country and learning about all the different ways you can make money with drones from insurance to roof inspections to the classic real estate, and just kind of really falling in love with the industry. I ended up getting a job in the drone delivery space with a carrier out in Virginia Beach, and about a year later, transition to my current company with Wing. Very cool. And so I'm very curious, what does drone delivery look like today? And maybe it's just as easy as you kind of walking us through kind of the process that you've been a part of, you know, what's being delivered, who are you delivering for, and mm -hmm. how is it physically actually being delivered? Sure, sure. So just to go back to your statement about Amazon, everyone had very high expectations with Amazon. I was, I believe, about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of dropped the ball pretty hard. Their delivery program has been pretty riddled with um, a lot of different bugs with their drone, and now they're still having issues. They were definitely posed to be the number one player in the space, just having that huge customer base that's ordering packages that are under 10 pounds every single day. I'm sure a couple billion dollars from now, they'll figure it out. Besides Amazon, you have a lot of different players in uh, the US right now. You have Alphabet's Wing, you have Zipline who has been very successful in Rwanda and is now introducing their P2 platform. Mm -hmm. You have uh, MANA, UPS Fly Forward, you have Flytrex, you have Matternet. You also have a couple of companies that have gone under this year and have been riddled with uh, a large amount of layoffs. Mm -hmm. So you have all those players in the space. And I would say that drone delivery right now is going from elementary school to middle school. That's the metaphor I would use. Okay. Uh, basically ramping up for scalability. And the biggest player in this space right now is Walmart. So Walmart is that retail giant who's going to make drone delivery a reality in America. I would say within the next three years, they're very aggressive in their approach. Um, instead of making their own drone delivery program, what they've done is they've used um, well-established drone delivery carriers to kind of battle it out in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth right now, they are partnered with Wing, Zipline, and DroneUp. And their intention there is to draw data from all of these carriers and decide if and who they're going to do the expansion with in the entire United States. Could be just one of the carriers, could be all three. But I would expect some exciting announcements from Walmart in 2025. Very cool. Very, very cool. That's exciting. I mean, Walmart, that's a big player right now. And so I'm assuming, you know, retail products being delivered via drone. What does that look like? I mean, somebody puts in an order. Are there limitations in terms of size, weight of the product or, or distance it can be delivered? Yeah, absolutely. It's going to depend on the carrier. Mm -hmm. um, right now with Wing, we can go out six miles. The weight limitations are going to be different with the different aircraft class categories. Typically, if there is too many items to fit in one box. They'll send as many drones as needed to make sure that that delivery is successful. Same thing with weight limitations. We can separate the boxes and make sure that those orders are delivered. 
Wing has a really cool system called an auto loader right now. So essentially it's autonomizing the entire process. So instead of someone from the drone operation going into Walmart, picking out the items, packing the items, putting the items on the drone, what you'll have is a retail worker who is going out, picking the items and putting the items on the auto loader. And then the drone will hover above the auto loader, drop what we call a winch. It's basically like a fishing reel with a hook on it that'll come down, pick up the package midair, and then make that delivery. It's really moving towards a fully autonomous system. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and this, that's all kind of pretty much happening in store. And so, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but kind of the, what I'm seeing kind of bird's eye view of the process is so a retailer like Walmart partners with a third party such as Wing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Wing has its own standards in, in terms of distance, weights, and ways of necessarily going about it. But it's the retail then, the company, the store that will go ahead and get the product, put it into an auto loader, which kind of does the attachment to the drone itself. And then the drone launches. Is it, you know, a, a Wing pilot, for example, who's there on site flying the drone, or is that done remotely? Yeah, so there's actually no one flying the drone. So this is all done at the back end where the drone is calculating its route based on a variety of parameters, different NFCs, making sure it's not conflicting with other wing traffic. And you'll have an operator like myself who will be monitoring a certain amount of uh, nests and making sure there's no airspace conflicts. Problem in the drone industry right now is we don't have a part 108. We don't have a specified altitude for just drone operations. So Mm -hmm. we do have a large amount of helicopter traffic in certain areas that can be in conflict with our drones. So we can't just rely completely on that autonomous system. You still need a human operator to make sure that there isn't an airspace incursion in the case of usually helicopters. Okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And that kind of had me thinking about sort of other factors, which I don't want to get in the weeds too much about when it comes to local laws and and that kind of thing. But I'm sure that does have an effect um, depending on the area, region you're in, in the country, proximity to airports and, and stuff like that, that may affect whether or not this particular retailer can do these types of deliveries. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. And there is some other limitations. Um, so as far as climate, you can't fly drones typically above 100 degrees and below freezing. You're going to start having a lot of problems. For example, the DJI fly cart which is their drone delivery system they just put out, can fly at a minimum of negative four degrees Fahrenheit and a maximum of 113 degrees Fahrenheit. So that kind of gives you an idea where all the other carriers sit as well. There is some platforms coming out that do claim to be able to fly in the snow and things such as that, but we're going to have to see how that plays out. So Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, places like this, become glaringly bad places to start a drone operation. So those are some of the limitations as far as climate. And we also have problems when it comes to drone capability. Now, these issues are going to work themselves out eventually. But right now, the drones are limited as far as time of day, distance, the options that are available when delivering by drone. All these things are making it so it's not the number one option in people's minds when they think about getting something delivered other than just not knowing drone delivery even exists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, But I think with time, all of those issues will work themselves out. Yeah. And I mean, it just kind of based on what you're, you're saying, you really can see the direction that this is going. You can see a lot of these barriers can be worked out over time. That is pretty exciting. You, You mentioned drone capabilities and I wanted to get to this before we move on to our last question was just the type of drone. We were talking a little bit before we, we pressed the record button and, and you were saying this isn't quite an FPV drone. So what kind of drones are used for this kind of operation? Sure. So there's different types of drones for different operations. The wing drone is a VTOL drone. So it takes mm-hmm. off like a helicopter and then flies in cruise flight just like an airplane. That is one of the better models, in my opinion, just as far as efficiency. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have different quadcopters, multi-copters, as far as the other companies that do drone operations. Typically, they're having their own in-house GCSs and autonomous systems, but it really just depends on the different carriers and uh, what their software and hardware look like. Very cool. Nice. 
All right, I, I'm, I've been excited to ask you this kind of question, the whole, this, this whole discussion. And so let's, let's get to it. It was cool that you mentioned DLA during your introduction and have you kind of have gone through some of the, your education through there and just a lot of networking and, and been keeping up with the kind of stuff we've been doing at the DLA. But here you are four years in, involved in, in drone deliveries. And based on what we're talking about, this is, this is cool stuff. I mean, this is a growing industry that is only going to keep growing and to be a part of it now is, is, has got to be pretty exciting. Tell us a little bit more how just how you got involved. And, and really, I think what I'm looking for is, is just advice for our audience who would like to do similar things, get involved in the drone industry, get involved, get drones involved in their current industries that they work in. What, what would you, you say to those people? Sure. So I think for anyone who's starting, the biggest thing is getting your 107. Obviously, there's a lot of companies that offer various routes to get there. Once you have that 107, it really depends on what you want to do. If you want to start your own company, you need to be boots on the ground, get in the muddy, stop in the pavement, getting referrals and just growing as a, as a small business. If you want to get involved with drone delivery, I would say you need to move to Texas or the Bay Area in California. That's where everything's happening right now. Okay. That's huge. Wow. Okay. Very nice. Next time I'm in that area, I think I'm just going to order something just for the experience. Yeah, absolutely. Be a drone. Well, Cheyenne, this has been an awesome conversation. And so it would be great to eventually have you back and to maybe talk a little bit more about this, maybe dig deeper on it. And if some stuff has happened in the regulatory space that maybe affects drone deliveries, it'd be cool to talk th about that as well. I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, appreciate the time. Thank you, Joan. And hey, if you got a drone question, we would love to find the answer to it. If you're part of the Drone Launch Connect community, please just type it in there, ask the question. We'll see it. We'll find someone who can answer it. That is, unless somebody in the Drone Connect community can answer it before us. That happens a lot. Or you can type on to ydq8.io, type your answer in there. We'll see it. We'll find the answer to it. Until then, we'll see you in the sky.